Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I'm glad that you are able to spend the evening with us. Uh, my name is Kate Bailey, and I'm the Assistant Director of Regional Alumni Programs in the Office of Development and Alumni Relations at the University of Delaware. And I'd first like to thank you all for registering for today's event and for joining us. You know, we hope you will post on social media using the hashtag blue hens forever. So we're going to get started building our terrariums shortly. Um, you get a little teaser in one of the, uh, the screens here, the workshop view. Uh, but first, we have the pleasure of hearing from a UD alumna and current staff member, Val Budashak, who is the interim director of the Botanic Gardens here at UD. In addition to her duties as director, Val serves as the volunteer and education coordinator at the gardens. She also wears two other professional hats. She is the executive director of the Delaware Nursery and Landscape Association, and she is a UD Extension agent. Her areas of expertise include commercial horticulture, educational programming, and roadside vegetation management. We are very excited that she has joined us this evening. So please join me in welcoming Val. It's great to be here. And I, you know what, I, I don't know about you, but you know, I was a fellow blue hen and I had no idea we had a botanic garden. And so I don't know if you do either. So I'm just gonna take a couple quick seconds to tell you that we do and where it is. So you know what, the UDBG is basically most everything south of the bridge, okay? So if you get an ice cream cone at the U Dairy Creamery, uh, you're in the Botanic Gardens. So if you happen to be tailgating near the football stadium uh, over by Townsend Hall, you're in the Botanic Gardens. So the gardens surround Warlow Hall, Townsend Hall, the um, budding up to the ice arenas all across the, uh, from the Star Campus. So that's where we are. Um, one of our claims to fame is uh, we have a, an amazing trial garden that other seed companies uh, challenge us like other universities to trial new products before they get on the market. So if you ever want to see something really colorful, come visit us in the summer when we have the trial garden. Pretty darn cool stuff. So what are we and who are we? Well, we're a research center, we're a lab and a classroom. We're used by lots of students within the College of Ag and up campus too. The textile majors, photography majors, the art sculpture majors, they're all down there. And they use our collection of plants, which as you can see, a pretty diverse collection. Well, who, why, who else uses it? Well, green industry professionals. Today I actually ran a conference for 160 green industry professionals. If we didn't have COVID, they would have been on campus in the botanic gardens. So today was the next best thing. Master gardeners and cooperative extension use it. They get trained to help you solve your homeowner problems. Student groups use it, scouts use it, alumni and family, and just people that like ice cream. There's a lot of people that are just wandering through, having a great time, biking, walking, talking, tailgating. Who else do we work with? Well, there's people that look like they're dead people sprawled across the lawn, is actually employee well-being. They run yoga classes right out of our garden. So if you ever need a little bit of respite, you can come do some yoga in the garden. It's very peaceful. We teach people how to build meadows. We do it. You know, we'll connect with any group that has a, a project or something that we can use as an educational stepping stone. What else do we do with education? Well, we have authors come. We have some pretty cool authors that are coming and discussing their, their books. Not always just like, you know, how to put this plant next to here, but interesting topics like all the president's gardens and um, Beatrix Potter's gardening uh, life. So things like that. We do some really fun workshops like dye workshops, hyper tufa. Right now we're getting ready for our wreath season, leaf stationery, glass sculpture. We do a little bit of everything. We also mix it up by hosting things like the Jesnerian Society, which means AKA violets. Okay, we have some outdoor classes and we had a fun time one time. We got all our, our, our staff and we put together great garden tools we couldn't live without. Man, we packed that room because everybody mm -hmm. likes to, to find out what are the greatest tools out there. So those are some other things we do. We also have a fitness trail. So while you're eating that ice cream, you want to burn it off at the exact same time. You can start right out at the creamery and, and it has little arrows, directional arrows around the uh, gardens that you can take. And we move those arrows just to one, confuse you, and two, take advantage of all the neat things that are in bloom. We also started with tailgating. We have some 
best darn tailgate spots on, on campus. So that obviously got shot and did not happen this fall, but last fall was our first year and it was a lot of fun. How do we raise our money? What, how, what sustains us? We have an annual plant sale and our annual plant sale is always at the end of April. Come on by, thousands of people do. Um, we collect 3,200 people just through the door last year uh, on um, Ag Day. So it's a lot of fun and it's a great educational moment because we've got a lot of plants you can't find elsewhere. So come on by. So we also have, thanks to COVID, we've learned to do an online store and we have a pretty neat one. Right now we have our holiday store. So you can buy UD grown poinsettias, custom wreaths, custom swags, and you can buy a wreath kit because we usually have a wreath workshop, which you saw from that one picture, but now we're selling kits. So you get to pick your bow, you get to pick your greens, you get to pick just like ordering a salad, at, you know, a salad place. Mm -hmm. You get to pick all your little things and then we hand it to you complete with a little video to tell you how to do it um, in a bag. And then you can take it home and make a wreath. What we also do with some of the funds we raise is we have an internship program. And this is a great way for students to figure out if they want to get into the green industry or if they want to be a landscape architect or what have you. And I called our last group the Fabulous Five and they did just about anything in the garden. Uh, they are a super asset to us because they, 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 they relate with our volunteers. They learn the history of the garden and they work hard in the garden. And as we also then take them to other gardens so they can learn all about those gardens. Um, and we love our volunteers. We, our volunteers do absolutely everything and anything from preparing our tropicals, for working in our woodies, for working in our trial gardens. We have scouts that are coming in, FFA, and we have research people that help us with uh, our collection. So that's kind of a little bit about what we do at the UDBG. So if you haven't heard about us, you should, and you should come pay us a visit. And if you want to get on our little list for classes or to know about our, um, our holiday sale, um, just send me an email at valamb at udel.edu. And we've got classes going right now. We have our schedule ready to go right through um, April of next year. So I thank you for this time and I hope you enjoy tonight because it sounds like it's gonna be a blast. So mm -hmm. thanks for having me, Kate. It's been a lot of fun and have a great time. Thanks. Thank you so much, Val. Uh, for those of you who had no idea the UD had botanic gardens, I hope this is now an excuse for you to go explore uh, this hidden gem on campus when you have a chance. So thank you so much, Val, again. We really appreciate you sharing that with thank us. Thank you. Um, and we thought this would be a great tie-in to the activity that we're doing tonight, uh, building terrariums. And so now I would like to introduce you to Kim and Brooke, who are joining us from Terrarium Therapy, who will guide us through the remainder of the event. All right. Thank you, Kate. And also Val. Wow. How do I live this close to so many things going on? I was just taking pictures and screenshots the entire time you were talking. I know that I can use the fitness trail. But can I get on not being an alumni to other things happening over there? Is that close to? Oh, sure. Members and non-members. Anybody, come on over. I mean, Brooke, did you just not get really excited? I know. I had no idea. I, I need to sign up for something. I know. I'm signing up for everything. That was really <laughs> exciting. You guys are doing a lot of awesome things over there, Val. And I think this is a really great tie-in. So we're just excited to be here. When Kate reached out, I was excited because... I was telling her before everybody jumped on, I am a two year resident to Delaware and I live very close to the University of Delaware. I live um, off of, off of um, Cleveland Avenue. And I'm, so I'm always at the on campus buying things. I'm at the co-op, yada, yada, yada. And I just love University of Delaware. I think it's such a great vibe down here. Um, I wish I'd gone to college here, but I think it's just, you guys have a really awesome community. So I was really excited when you reached out. Plus to know that we're kind of collaborating with Val and what's going on over there is just awesome. Um, my name is Kim, as I said, and this is Brooke. She's the co-host for this evening. And we are terrarium therapy. So what is terrarium therapy? You may be wondering if you haven't checked us out prior to hopping on tonight. We were, and still are in some ways, a mobile plant workshop company. So. What that means is we don't have a storefront, basically. We travel around in our vehicles and do pop-up workshops at breweries, wineries, 
Um, it's really expanded into libraries, hospitals, like we're everywhere now, but it really truly started at breweries and wineries because in 2016, when I got this concept going, I was thinking, I'm always out with my friends and I noticed that people are just glued to their phones. So for the past three years, we've been trying to tell people to unplug from technology and plug into the natural world. But now we're like, oh no, no, you can do both <laughs> because- Plug back in, mind, hurry. <laughs> no, get online actually. All of our marketing had said about unplugging from technology was kind of ironic now that the climate that we live in. But I like to say that what we're doing tonight and what we've been doing online is not really necessarily a alternative, but more of like a secondary branch to our workshops. And we're really excited that we can be in front of all of you as we're seeing in the chat box, you guys are kind of spread out everywhere. And I know that we ship things out across the country for this workshop. So we're excited that we can be in your homes tonight with you and talk about succulents. So I'm not a botanist. Um, I am a plant lover and also a very highly knowledgeable person with succulents and cacti, as well as Brooke. We became friends. Um, Brooke started stalking at me, stalking my workshops. <laughs> and then I said, would you like to work here? Because you could come to these workshops and you could host them and you could also get paid. So Brooke is extremely knowledgeable in succulents and cacti and other plants. So it was a good collaboration now that she's, she's down in Westminster, Maryland, and I'm in Newark, like I said. So we can do these virtually now from the comfort of our own homes, which is awesome. But we're gonna talk tonight about how to care for your planter that we're making. So we like to call it terrarium therapy because it really is therapeutic. And I hope that tonight you're having a glass of wine, you're having a tea, and you're relaxing in your home while we're learning a lot about plants as well. So let's go over, Brooke, what we got in our kits and talk yeah. about all of that. Absolutely. So hopefully everyone received their kit. Um, inside your kit, you should have received your birch planter. So you have this little guy here. You also should have received a little pine cone decoration and some winter greens. Also, you should have received some moss and some stone as well. So you have little bags um, that came in your kit. You also should have received a bag of soil and you should have also received a care card and a card that tells you a little bit about us. So the care card is actually gonna help you be a good reference as to how to take care of your plants once we finish the uh, project, but also you can always reach out to us directly. We'll always help you with these. Um, and then finally, you should of course have your five live plants. And as we're planning them, um, Kim and I will give you some information on all of the items that came in your kit, but specifically your plants, we'll talk a little bit about that so any questions that you have as we're going through the project, feel free to just type in the chat. We'll be monitoring it the best that we can um, so we can answer any of your questions. And then, of course, at the end, we want to answer all of your questions as well. Um, and then I think the final thing, there should also be some holly berries as well. Um, so you may have some of those little guys in your kit. Yes, perfect. I also want to say, guys, um, we had a little bit of an issue at the distribution center um, Last week, we had a little bit of a COVID outbreak down there, sadly. So we were kind of all quarantined from being in the greenhouse. So we weren't able to oversee the birch planters. So some of the birch planters, I know you guys got an email from Kate. Some of the birch planters got sent out that weren't in the best condition. So if you received one that is faulty, please plant in it tonight, keep what you have and then we'll send you a replacement. So you can either send us a chat message now or you can reach out to Kate and she'll be happy to get that info over to us. We would hate to see you not participate tonight because your planter's not great. You're gonna get a second one. So take a picture of it, send it to Kate. We'll, re we'll definitely replace it. And then we'll just move on from there. So I know that we are trying to be proactive but maybe some of you just opened it tonight and that's certainly okay. There's a lot going on in our lives right now. So. With that said, um, Brooke, let's talk about the first step. So when we're building a planter with succulents in it, if it doesn't have a hole in the bottom or drainage system, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna kind of make one. So we're gonna take the gravel, the, the stone or the gravel that you received in your bag, 
and we're going to put that in the bottom of our um, birch planter. So I know that we probably got some different size bags. So I would say a heavy handful or maybe two handfuls of that gravel is going to go into our bottom of the planter. Also guys, before we get started, let's kick off this whole thing with a little bit of fun. I forgot to mention this. Please, please put in the chat box um, tonight what your plant level is. So are you a beginner plant person? Are you a kind of newbie to the plant world? Are you a plant killer? Do you have a black thumb? Do you have a green thumb? Do you do a garden? Let us know in the chat right now who you are. We'd like to know who's in front of us and we like to see what, what your level is. And be honest because we have a lot of people who are plant killers. So we have a mid-level person here, plant newbie, beginner who has managed to kill succulents. <laughs> exactly, this is what we like to see. Tend to kill, we're not gonna name any names here. Plant enthousi enthusiast with a black thumb, perfect. <laughs> Poor track record with succulents. <laughs> Don't wanna jinx myself, but I keep them alive. Um, biology degree, but killer. <laughs> see, this is hilarious. Yeah, so Pro plant killer. We're just, we're just being honest. It feels good to let it out, right? Cactus killer. That's a new one. I like that name. <laughs> That's my new nickname, Cactus Killer. Um, just getting started with succulents. Okay with them. Looking to keep them alive. Nice. It's nice. All right. Best with peppers and tomatoes. Yeah, that's what we like to see. So it's interesting with succulents. Typically, you're either like a tropical plant person and you can keep them alive very well, or you don't do so well with the succulents because with tropical plants, you need to love them a little bit more. With our succulents, it's not, I don't want to use the, the word neglect because I know Brooke hates that, but it's more like you don't have to love on them as much, Brooke, right? You right. Can, you, you don't necessarily have to, you don't want to neglect them. Of course, they need attention. You need to monitor them. You have to check on them daily, especially when you're starting out, when you're starting and you're new with succulents or really any plant, the first several weeks that you're taking care of them. You need to look at them every day. Their leaves will talk to you. They'll they'll kind of tell you, you know, if they're thirsty or if, you know, maybe they've had a little bit too much water. Um, they may even start to lean towards light a little bit. So watching them in the first several weeks that you have any plant is really important. So um, if you neglect them, that's, that's fine, but not at first. You wanna make sure that you get to know them first. Yeah, good. It's like dating. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. You want to get to know them, but you don't want to give them too much attention at first because you're going to ruin it. <laughs> so not neglecting. I know you hate that and I'm going to stop using it. So neglect is a strong word and it's negative. So you want to maybe not overdo it. So somebody just wrote in, I have a tendency to overwater my succulents. I think that's the number one way in which people and I think the word neglect usually comes from the idea that these are these are desert plants, so they don't need as much water as um, you know a vegetable plant or maybe um, another type of house plant, um, maybe a tropical plant. So they're desert plants; they just need a lot less water. So um, neglect isn't really the, the best word; just not as not, not as much water as most plants need. So right. Okay, got it. Yep, got it. So we're not neglecting them, we're just um, not overwatering them. So you guys are gonna put a um, handful or a oversized handful of gravel in the bottom because we're gonna um, kind of mimic a little drainage system with that. Yeah, and so you can go ahead and put in the whole bag of stone that you received um, for okay. this size planner. So the goal is to just put a layer of a layer across the bottom of the planter and this is going to be in place of this is actually going to allow for some drainage so when you water your plant it's actually the water is going to go through the soil and when it hits the rocks it separates instead of staying in one place and it really spreads that water out and allows for um, it to separate from the soil so you can do this with really any of your planters that if you do not have drainage I know a lot of plant uh, uh, plant lovers will always say that drainage holes are absolutely necessary. It is it is usually best practice, um, but if not, you can especially with succulents get away with planters that don't. Just make sure that you have a plan or you have some stone in the bottom of your planter. Yeah. Also with this planter, Brooke, it does have a lot of seeping areas in it. Um, 
I don't know how it would do if you let it a lot of water in it and let it drain through. But I think that since this is a winter planter and we're going to definitely be keeping it inside, we'll be okay with just putting that gravel in the bottom. Yeah, so absolutely. Next thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to add the soil. So the soil that we have for you, it's a kind of a terrarium therapy proprietary mix of activated charcoal. It's a succulent mix. It's a succulent cacti mix, which is very different from a topsoil or an indoor soil mix. Brooke, can you tell them what's the key differences here between the two? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the main things that you're going to notice, so this is a fast a fast draining mixture, and you're going to notice that in this mixture, you're going to see a lot of little white specks. What these are, this is actually perlite, and what perlite is, is actually a volcanic mineral. It's a mineral rock. So what it does is it helps manage and aerate your soil. It helps drainage, and it creates air pockets within the soil so that um, it allows the water to go through your soil and it doesn't put a lot of stress on your plant's roots. Yeah, so that's the difference. The, the soil is a big key difference for us. Um, a lot of people don't take into consideration maybe if they buy a plant somewhere that maybe the soil wasn't the best and you kind of had a, you were set up for failure from the beginning. So the soil mix that we like to use has some key ingredients in it. So make sure that you are picking out a good soil if this becomes a huge hobby of yours. And right. um, we did have a question from Maddie. Maddie asked if she should use all of her soil because she got two large bags. Yes, you can. Um, you can, basically you just want to fill the planter all the way to the top. So if you have leftover soil, that's absolutely fine. You can just, um, you can use that for something else or save it for later. Um, but really the goal is to fill up your planter all the way to the top with soil. Yeah, perfect. And then yeah. it's absolutely um, okay that you put all the rocks. So make sure you, if you used all the rocks, that's fine too. Yeah, exactly. So we don't always have a strong grip on how much uh, stone and soil they're sending. So fill up your level to the very top. You don't have to pack it in. You can keep it kind of loose, but the planter does always look better when it's filled to the top. And then as we're planting, we may lose a little bit of soil. If you have extra, just keep it nearby because we'll be adding in a little bit more as we go. So Brooke, I'm thinking the first plant we should put in, we'll start from the back. I sure. think. And we'll start with that fluted jade. So okay. the fluted jade, which is the, how would you describe the looks of this one? Like, like a kind of a green bean? Yeah, it looks like green beans almost. And you may also, you may have also heard if you are a succulent lover of an ogre ear or a jade golem. This guy is very similar, but he is not quite an ogre ear. His ends are a little bit more pointed um, and don't flatten out like an ogre ear does. But this guy, so this guy is a flute, but it is in the jade family. Yeah, and we love the jade plant because it's pretty easy to care for. And the jade is one of the plants tonight that's really gonna speak to you and tell you what it needs. So, you know, it won't be something like a, a new relationship, like you don't know what's going on and all of a sudden it's, you know, your boyfriend or girlfriend's mad at you. And you're like, well, what did I do? <laughs> and then, you know, it's gone. This one is gonna tell you very, very quickly out of the gate if it's unhappy. So the leaves on it, are gonna to start to shrivel and get a little wrinkly when it needs more water. And yeah. if you're seeing a transparency or a yellowish color on the tip, um, it's usually an indication that you're overwatering it. So Absolutely. I have one I think here. Uh, Brooke, get them started with the planting and I'll see if I can find one that actually needs a little water. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your plant out of its nursery pot. So just remove it from there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to massage the roots so that all of the soil is coming off of that plant. So just massage it down just like this. Now, some of your soil may be very dry. Some of it could be a little bit wet. Um, take note of that because that's going to allow us to direct you in your watering schedule. If it's a little wetter, um, a little bit more wet, then you may want to hold off a while before you uh, water these guys. 
if it is very dry, then you may want to water it sooner. So we'll talk about the watering a little bit later, but first you just wanna take that soil all the way down. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow for this plant's roots to become acclimated and to grow in its new environment. And it just kind of gives you some space and you may feel like you are uh, damaging the roots, but you're not just, not too, too hard, but just getting all of that soil off of there is key. And you can kind of yeah. get it down. My guy's got a lot of moisture in his soil. So um, I think I've got him down as far as I'm going to. Yeah, I believe that these plants were water right before shipment. So this soil is unusually wet. Um, we usually get the plant shipped out and because of COVID, Things have been a little tricky this week with our quarantine greenhouse. So we would typically send stuff out that's dry and then we would tell you to water it this weekend. But this uh, lesson today is a good lesson that the soil is a little wet and our soil that's coming out of our pots are a little wet. So we're gonna wait a week. We're not gonna water them this weekend. We're actually gonna wait a week. Wouldn't you say that's a safe bet, Brooke? Yeah, absolutely. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your handy dandy chopstick that you should have received in your kit and you're going to go ahead and pick a place for it. Now I'm going to go ahead and put it to the right side. I like to kind of put it a little bit forward because we're going to put our greenery all the way in the back. So maybe about like an inch and a half forward. I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, flute my flute jade here. So you go ahead and just make a little divot into your soil. And then you'll mm -hmm. stick that guy straight down into that, that hole that you've made. And you can use your hands or you can use your chopstick and go ahead and just make sure all the roots are covered. And that would be your first step. And really this is what we're gonna do for each of your plants. Now, this is a creative project. So make sure that if you, um, you know, think that a plant's gonna look better in a different spot, that you go ahead and put that where you want. Um, you don't have to do it exactly like we're doing it, um, but we're just kind of trying to give you a little bit of guidance based on a few that we've played around with. Melissa says, oops, almost ripped all the roots off. That's okay, Melissa, actually. Um, the succulents don't love if you take the roots off, but they will regrow and propagate new leaves, new roots. So that's okay if that happens. And then she's also asking, can you give a list of the common names and the scientific names of all the plants at the end? Absolutely. So at the end, we will write into the chat box and we will go over again what all the names are of your plants. So the next one, Brooke, I would say we should put in is, let's tuck in that elephant bush, um, our jade plant here. So this is one that we like to use for a lot of our bonsai workshops and it is a plant that it's a jade plant and it's also um, referred to as elephant bush because elephants love to eat this plant. It's from South Africa. It can get very large. This is a little clipping of it. It's adorable. And we like to put this in our planter because it has different textures and it's also one that will grow. So the two, the two plants that we set you guys up with today, um, these first two are very easy to care for. The other ones are easy to care for as well, but these two shouldn't have any problems with them. Right, Brooke? Absolutely. Yep, and um, I know that there was a, someone had mentioned that off of their jade plant, their, um, their flute, that one of their leaves had fallen off. And actually that happened with mine as well. So go ahead and put that to the side. We're gonna talk a little bit about propagation and what you can do with your leaves that fall off because it is very common that your little leaves are gonna fall off, especially from the bottom of your succulents. So don't fret about that. Um, it doesn't, it does, it's not gonna hurt them. And actually you can propagate and grow your own succulents from these leaves. So um, go ahead and put that little guy to the side and then the little elephant tree or little elephant bush, I'm going to go ahead and put him right next to my jade flute. Yeah, also we like to say here, don't hate propagate if you lose a leaf. Um, we're we're going to show you tonight how to do a soil propagation station and also a water propagation station. So if you lose leaves during the planting, just pull them off. Um, Pull them off to the side. As you can see, Brooke lost one. I'm losing a couple here. 
It's not that the plant is unhealthy. It's just the nature of it. So we'll keep those off the side. Um, Amy says on a previous project, I only added some soil and didn't remove the soil from the roots that came with the plant from the start. Is that a big problem? No, it's not a problem. It's just something that we like to do. It's an extra step. It helps acclimate the plant into its new soil, into its new home. Plus the nursery soil, soil is a little different than the bag soil that we gave you. So it's not a problem. It's just an extra step. Um, does the elephant jade grow up or more full? Cool. Yes. This I'm so plant glad that she asked. <laughs> yes. So I would like to show you my elephant tree that I have that has grown. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you can see in my, um, my, my main view, but this guy is, um, he's probably, he's not that old. Um, he's actually probably only about a year and a half old. Um, so they will grow to be quite large. So um, definitely, I, I recommend if you maybe go on from this holiday planter, if you decide to separate your uh, plants at any time. These are very resilient plants. So you can absolutely kind of put them in different pots. And if you separate your elephant bush, elephant tree, um, it's very likely that it will grow rather large. Nice. Yeah, can you hold their ears up one more time? Yeah. Brooke? Um, yeah, so guys, you can um, propagate the jade plant. You can cut it put it on, we'll go over all the propagation stuff later, but jade plant is one that is very easy to grow. So this one will grow as large as the planter that it's in, basically. All right, okay. Kim, what, which uh, plant did you like to do next? I think letting you kind of guide do, me through this one. Yeah, I think the next one that we should do is the, um, let me see here. Let's do the pearl plant. Okay. Yeah. So this is the like Pearl um, Nurnberg. So this guy is just another um, variation of an Echeveria. So there's actually hundreds of variations of Echeveria plants, but this little guy is kind of rainbow colored. So a lot of times you'll see um, pinks and reds and greens come out of this one. A lot of times in the summertime, it'll get a lot of, a lot more rainbow color to it. But same nice. as the other ones, you want to massage the roots and just take as much of that soil off as you can. Now the pearl is one that is very delicate and beautiful. So therefore it's a little high maintenance, like everything, like everyone in life, right? So this one, you have to be very careful when you're planting it. If you do lose a little leaf or two, just pull it off to the side. This one does lose leaves sometimes in the transporting. So if that happens, don't fret, just hold your leaf. I just lost a little one, unfortunately, but it happens guys. So place that in there. Now, a rule of thumb with succulents is typically the lighter the succulent, the more sun that it needs. So we do have a mixed batch of plants here, but the, the um, hobbit or the fluted jade and the elephant bush they can really handle, you know, more sunlight. So we're giving you some plants in here that are gonna want a little bit more sunlight than normal. The lighter the plant, very beautiful, but a little bit more sun sometimes it needs. Um, throughout the winter months, it's gonna get a little more colorful with the cool temperature changes. So if you have it near a windowsill, and it gets a little bit of a cool temperature. You'll see the colors come out a little bit more. Um, Brooke, you always like to say that it's a little stressed, right? Yeah, so unfortunately, we are not like succulents. So succulents become more beautiful when they're stressed out. Um, I wish that happened for us, right? Um, but unfortunately, that doesn't. Um, but for succulents, it, they, it can bring out some really beautiful colors and plants. Um, however, it's not necessarily a good thing. It does, um, you know, the stress is, is possibly because it has too much light um, and it could be sunburn, something like that. So if you do notice that it is turning um, a lot of really pretty colors, then it may be under, um, it may not be doing so hot. So you may want to change its environment and evaluate the temperature, the sunlight that it's getting, and just really pay attention to that plant. Um, but they can really change some pretty colors. Um, even your um, 
even your aloes will do that sometimes. They'll start to turn like a reddish color, something like that. And they can look pretty, but it doesn't mean that they're doing well. So um, Rebecca said that her plants were sitting at her window all week and the soil is super dry. Can I water it this week? Yes. So that crumbly dry soil that you're referring to is exactly where you need it to be between watering. So absolutely. Um, I got my kit only a couple of days ago. So maybe I was in the watering time at the greenhouse. So if your soil is dry, you are going to want to go ahead and water it this weekend. If it's not, and if it's like mine and Brooks, as you can see, it's a little damp, then we're going to wait a week. So dry soil is happy soil for succulents. And then Melissa said, my plant or my, my pets like to eat my plants. Um, I once had a mint plant and my rabbit ate it. Stem and everything. <laughs> what? My question is, is it, are any of these plants poisonous to pets? So that's a great question. So they, Brooke, do you want to take this one? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So as far as uh, plants being toxic to animals. So of course, any of these plants are not going to do a body good for anyone, whether it be an animal or for us. So if we have these for dinner, then our stomach is definitely going to hurt just like your animal. Um, there are a few plants that are a little bit more toxic. The plants that we have this evening are not going to be toxic to your animal. It may give them a belly ache um, if they were to get into them or eat them, um, but it's not going to be completely toxic to them. So of course, if you have curious animals, we recommend that you keep them away from the plants in general. Um, but it's, you know, none of these plants in particular are specifically toxic to animals, but definitely it can ups upset your stomach. So um, put it up high, put it up somewhere they can't get to it if you do have curious pets. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. So the next one, Brooke, I'm thinking you can do the mix between those two. Um, okay. can do I might yeah, put this guy kind of, actually, I might just put both of them like right here in the front. So yeah. these guys are actually very similar. I believe we have the Echeveria Tippy mm -hmm. and we have the Echeveria Lipstick. I believe this little guy yeah. is. So yeah. um, It's these a hybrid between the Elegant and the Lipstick from the okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this bigger guy here and I'm gonna massage his roots down. So, and again, you guys can plant these wherever you like. If you are finding that um, you, you know, a different setup is a little bit more visually appealing for you, go for it. Um, once you finish this planter, if you decide like, hey, I want this plant over here, you can pull them back up and then replant them. They will, um, it will not hurt them. They're very resilient. As I was saying, their roots are not very, they won't go very deep, they spread out. So um, you can really repot these time and time again. So once the, um, once your winter decor is put away, if you wanna change up your planner, you can absolutely do that. It's up to you. Brooke, the chat box is lit. Just let me tell you. I'm loving right. these questions, guys. Let me have it. <laughs> Amy's asking me, I have a couple succulents single potted. I re keep reading that you're only supposed to water every two to four weeks, but the soil seems dry out in just a few days, um, less than one week, she says. Is it okay to water? Also, one of them doesn't have good drainage, so I'm trying to be careful. So I know that sometimes we feel like because the soil is dry, you're keeping it on that schedule and you, you wanna kind of bump up the watering schedule. I always recommend to just kind of let that go um, and continue to stay on that every about two to three week schedule, specifically because you can't revive them from overwatering. So you wanna make sure that you just tread lightly when it comes to watering. Um, and so best practice is to wash the leaves. So if you start to notice that they're kind of a little bit drier or they're starting to shrivel up a little bit, then give it a little bit of water. Um, you can kind of watch it. It's um, just all in the leaves. So if you um, notice that they're super dry, just go easy on adding more water. All right, what other questions do we have? Um, I think that's it for now. So, okay. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of other great questions coming through. Hold on. 
Oh, okay. You said it was lit. So I was, I was ready to like, fire right. off it's, been, of. it's been super lit. I've been answering them as we go, but um, oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, we have a very um, high participant rate tonight with our guests. So I love it. Awesome. Sometimes people not, don't ask questions and I, you know. <laughs> so I just put my two edge of areas here in the front. Um, and like I said earlier, if you lose a few leaves, these guys are really popular for dropping leaves. So if you lose these leaves, put them to the side because we can show you how to propagate those. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to go ahead and just make sure my roots are covered up on these. Um, Sarah's asking, any tips for a house that doesn't get a ton of sun? Yeah, you should move, Sarah. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm in the same situation, Sarah. Tell your house. <laughs> I'm in the same situation. Find someone new. <laughs> um, I just you, there's just going to be spots around the house that you're going to find that have those sunny spots. So I have a lot of windowsill plants and a lot of shelves built around that. So just find the best place with the most sun in your house. Yeah, and um, making sure that wherever you do put it, so um. Sometimes if the window still isn't the greatest direct light, just rotate your planter. So you want to rotate it from time to time so that different angles of your plants are getting a little bit of sun. Also, um, if you're not opposed to it, of course, you can use grow lights. Um, I, I have several um, that I've gotten off of Amazon, I think. Um, I have some here, you can kind of see. Um, and these little guys, like you can clip them to different things. And these really, really um, work well with succulents. So I think I got like a set of like two of them for like 20 bucks or something like that on Amazon. Um, but grow lights definitely work if you don't have a lot of light in your house. Um, let's see, somebody else asked us, oh, good question. Um, does the temperature of the room make a difference? Um, yes. So of course you want to make sure that your, um, your plants are not sitting directly over top of like a, like a, a heating or an air conditioning vent. And you may have some plants that like a lot of humidity. So succulents are usually okay. As long as you are keeping them, um, above, usually above like, I like to say 60 degrees. Um, but if you have maybe tropical plants or, um, I know like fiddle leaf figs or monstera plants, anything like that, um, you want to make sure that you have a little bit more humidity. So maybe a um, humidifier and misting the leaves every couple days, something like that. Yeah. So Melissa asks, what is a pretty flowering plant that does well in the cold? She remembers having one as a child with white petals that did really well on a windowsill in the winter. Any idea what the flower was? What are some good cold winter flowering plants? Hmm. So as far as winter, let's see. Um, I'm trying to reread her question a little bit. It's a little bit loaded question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know which one she would be referring to. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. But as far as some um, cold weather winter flowering plants, um, I know like the holiday cactuses. So yeah, like a Christmas for instance, cactus. like the, you know, Thanksgiving cactus, the Christmas cactus, the Easter cactus, those will all bloom. Um, really, if you, um, if you use uh, grow lights in the house, um, pretty much any plant can actually might bloom um, in the winter, but definitely those cactuses, I'd have to think a little bit longer on um, some more flowering ones. I'm thinking um, that maybe the Christmas cactus is what she's referring to. Mm -hmm. um, somebody asked this, but I think you already answered. Is it okay for succulents to sit close to a heater? No. Um, they'll dry out pretty quickly. I have that situation going on in my house. So I'm battling a low light, um, lots of vents around the house, dry heat. So that's my plants, if I in that situation, are doing really well on windowsills and hanging um, planters at windows. So this one, um, maybe a centerpiece on a table to keep it away from that if it's near a window. Um, Brooke, the next thing we're going to do is add those winter greens. So you can take that little ribbon off. 
and we're gonna have to pop them in the back of our planter. So I really like to put them just around the back. Um, I know that if you wanna be super creative and start adding it into all areas where there are empty spaces, but I think if you add it into the back, that's kind of the, it kind of looks the best. And I like to go pretty deep in there as deep as you can. We did treat the greens, but if your greenery starts to, um, you know, fade away and you start to lose a lot of needles, what you can do is spritz it. It will help keep it just like your Christmas tree. But a secondary thing that you can do is take a nature walk, um, go with your family and friends and clip some greeneries and just replace it. So if you start to drop some needles, you can certainly do that. Um, Brooke, I also like to, you know, kind of put that pine cone in there as well. I know that we still have that sitting around, so. Yeah, absolutely. So I kind of just, um, kind of just moved my greenery around a little bit, just like you would a Christmas tree almost, just kind of bending the leaves around. And you can kind of pop, you can pop your little, pine cone in there wherever you like it. If you like it in the center, if you like it maybe off to the side. Yeah, wherever you'd like. Looking good, Brooke. Yeah, I think it's coming together well. So also with the little, if you have little holly berries, maybe you can put, I'm gonna put mine probably right next to the pine cone in some way. Okay. If anyone lost leaves during this process also, please put them aside because I'm going to show you momentarily how to propagate new leaves with the soil method. And then Brooke's going to show you how to propagate with the watering method. Absolutely. So the last thing that we want to do, guys, is you should have some moss. So what you can do with this is you can actually use this just um, to clean up the aesthetics of your project. And what I like to do is kind of just tuck it in around where you can see the soil and just kind of fill in those little spots. So anywhere you see like the soil popping through, just go ahead and stick some moss in there. Now the moss that you received, it is not live moss. So what we want to make sure that you do know is that if um, you, when you are watering your plants, try to water underneath of the moss, not on top of the moss. Also, when you're watering the plants, don't water on top of your succulents. Make sure that you're watering directly to the root system. Um, so sometimes the moss can hold moisture. So try to keep the water away from it. So just lift up your little pieces of moss when you're watering. But mm -hmm. I like to stick mine in all the way around so that I kind of just cover up all that soil and it just makes it look a little bit. Okay, better. so somebody asked, what is the bag of mulch for? So that's a little um, orchid bark that we can put in in little empty spaces too. It just kind of has that woodsy natural feel that you can add in. I always forget that we, I, I actually had my planner sitting on top of mine, so I, <laughs> I found it. So yeah, just also using yeah. it for aesthetics, so we can pop some of that on there too. Yeah, just right. trying to open spaces and have that in. Um, loving it. I think this looks awesome. Guys, and I feel like this is a planter that can last you through, you know, March and beyond. So you can keep, it. it, it, it does have a very like, holiday feel and winter feel with the berries, but it really will take you through, you know, almost leading up to spring. So you can take the greens out, you can replace it with some other fun colors. You can even almost do this, I feel like, into April. Um, and I'm taking this, um, this extra little bark that we have and just sprinkling it around. Again, be creative. You can kind of put it wherever you'd like. Yeah, looks good, Brooke. And then guys, if you have a little paintbrush at home or any kind of little brush and you wanna use it to clean up your planter, you can do so after we get off tonight and you're sitting around, you know, finishing up a glass of wine or whatever you're having, 
maybe just go back and this is one of my favorite parts of the class. It's so relaxing to clean it up. Um, just add a little attention to detail in there. And Brooke, I'm gonna show everybody while you're finishing up yours, how to do a um, soil propagation station. And yeah, then absolutely. we can go over the best um, watering techniques. Um, we really like to use a eyedropper, as we say on the care guy. Uh, eyedropper or a, let me grab mine. Brooke, do you have some nearby in your watering tools? Um, unfortunately, I, I have my spray bottle nearby. Yeah, so I have this guy. This works really well. I also oh, yeah, have, I yeah, I also have my pipette somewhere in my station. But any, if you go on Amazon and you find a 5M, 5ml pipette or a medicine dropper, it works really well to give each plant five milliliters of water. So a teaspoon of water per plant. You really don't wanna overdo it to start it out. If you see that they need a little bit more water, like we had talked about earlier, the leaves will start to get a little wrinkled. Then you can increase the watering with succulents. They can survive in like a drought situation. That's what they're, that's what they're made for. That's where they thrive. But we do wanna increase the water a little bit if we're starting to notice that they're struggling and getting a little stressed out. But we don't wanna go too long without watering, but we don't, definitely don't wanna overwater. Overwatering succulents because they store all of their water in their leaves will actually just kill them immediately. So there are two ways in which succulents can um, not survive. They'll not, they're not gonna survive overwatering and they're not gonna survive cold temperatures because their cell walls will actually burst in the event of cool temps, too, too cold of temperatures or overwatering. So just make sure that you're not doing one of those. And we're gonna keep these inside for sure. Mm -hmm. seems like everybody, I mean, there are some West Coasters, but it seems like you guys are mostly in the area that we're in. Yeah, so um, Amy was asking, she said, I thought succulents like deep watering, deep but infrequent. So you do want to do a bit of, of deep um, watering, but you also want to think about when you planted them, how long their roots were. So taking those um, water, taking those uh, watering cans or um, bottles or, or eyedroppers or uh, pipettes, whatever you choose to use, and really getting it down onto the roots. So um, further away from the leaves, from the leaves itself. So definitely, but just kind of keep in mind um, how deep the roots were when you planted them. Now, one succulent in particular that you may want to water a little bit deeper are the string of. So the string of pearls, string of bananas, string of turtles. Those have a lot of roots that are very tendril like so those go a lot deeper so you want to make sure you're getting to the tips of those um, a lot of people will actually um, bottom water those types of plants mm -hmm. so it's really up to you um, again just you know monitoring your plants and seeing what you notice works best for them yeah definitely so i'm going to show you guys if you lost the leaf tonight we like to say don't hate propagate this is my little propagation, propagation station. I know that Brooke has hers out as well. So I'm gonna use this one as an example. Um, this would be one that is probably not going to survive a propagation because it looks like it dropped because it was over water. It's almost transparent and it's just probably not gonna make it. But an ideal plant leaf to propagate is this one right here. It's a fresh cut one from the stem. It's also a very healthy leaf. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it into the soil like so. And it's this one right here. So if it was a fresh cut tonight and you guys are propagating on purpose, meaning you're actually going to take a piece and don't be scared. I'm just going to pull this one off. It sounds so bad, but I'm going to take this one and I'm going to sit it out and let it sit on something that is a dry surface. So whether it be a paper plate or you can use our little nifty cards here, make sure that you hashtag us if you're doing it, but I'm gonna put it out on a dry flat surface for a couple of days. I'm gonna let the leaf callus over, meaning dry out, and then we'll just wait a couple of days. After the leaf has no longer has that fresh cut 
cut on it, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it into the soil. So you can do one or two things. You can place it directly on the soil and let it find the roots that way, let the um, leaf find its new root system that way, or you can help it out a little bit and maybe put it into the soil. So after, this is the exciting part guys, after a few, few weeks, you're gonna start to see a root system forming right here. Like Brooks, you can see Brooks, you can see mine. And then maybe after a few more weeks, you're gonna start to see a little rosette start to form from your plant, which is so exciting. And this is a great quarantine project, by the way. And then maybe after three weeks, four weeks, a month, you're gonna have your own little uh, rosette, your fully formed succulent starting to grow. And what will happen is it's gonna extract all the nutrients that it needs from its leaf, from its mom plant here. And it's gonna take away and it's gonna to start to, if you can see on the end, start to really dry up. So the nutrients and the actual plumpness of the leaf will start to decrease and it'll become paper thin and start to really extract. So it's pulling out all that life form from its leaf and really starting to propagate a full new leaf on here or a full new plant. Then um, I actually planted mine today, Brooke. I had a really good propagation going that I put into a little pot. Can't find it at the moment but you'll know when it's time. It will, this leaf will be paper thin and it will have taken all the life out of it. And then all you'll do, this one's a little premature, but it'll make it. I'm gonna show you guys right here. I'm just gonna pluck it off. I'm gonna pluck that off. And then I would just repot it into a new plant. It has its fully grown root system. I'm gonna put it in a little pot, add some of that soil that you guys have and watch it grow. And that's the dry soil way. So Brooke, yep. how often do you recommend spritzing these as they're getting started? So I spray mine. If, at first I spray them like every day. And then as they start to root every like other day. Um, and then somebody had asked, why do you need to dry them out before? for a few days before planting. So what we're talking about in regards to drying out, you wanna dry out the leaf that has just come off of your full grown succulent. So the reason being is because you want to make sure that they are callousing over. So when the leaf comes off of the parent plant or the big plant, it is going to be a little bit moist and you want to let this part of that leaf callus over so that it can then grow roots. It's part of the pro propagation process. So, and then again, you don't want to plant it right away. You just want to sit it on top of soil. Okay, Um. So yeah, and I recommend once you sit it on top of soil, after you let it dry out about um, once a day or every every um, other day is just fine. But one of the other ways that you can actually propagate is water propagation. So I do have two examples um, of my water propagations. I need to get a few more going because it does propagate a little bit faster um, in water. And what I actually do is, I'm gonna try to show in both of my views here, is I take a little plastic shot glass and you can really use anything um, that is like a shallow little glass. Um, and you just want to, what I do is I actually, um, I clasp my leaf in between two toothpicks and I just put tape on either side and then I put it in my shot glass just so the very tip after it's calloused over is sitting in water and then what you will find is that the roots will begin to sprout in the water. Now I know this sounds crazy because succulents don't um, need a lot of water. You can overwater them, but in the propagation progress or process, um, you can actually do it this way and it helps them grow faster. Um, so that's one way that you can do it. And you can do this until a little baby sprouts out. And then again, once the baby sprouts out, then you can remove it from the parent leaf and then plant it in soil. So you can see, I got these little guys going here. Nice. That looks great. Great right in water. So when is it with the uh, water propagation, when is it time to take it out of the water and plant it into soil? So once you start to see a little um, baby rosette come off of it, so when you see a little guy like this um, come off of the plant, then you can actually 
pop that guy off from the parent leaf and then just making sure that it comes with a few of the roots and then you can plant that right into soil. So once you start to see a succulent develop off of any of your propagations, you can go ahead and plant them as long as there's pretty healthy roots still still there. Got it. Um, perfect. So what do you what if you plant without cutting? Wait, what if you plant without cutting off the old leaf? Somebody is asking. Um, asking. So can you? So I think what they're asking is, um, can you plant it? Can you plant it without removing it from the plant, uh, the parent leaf? Possibly. Let me just make sure. Let me reread that one. And another. Someone else is asking. So, you, what you, so if you don't remove the old leaf. Um, it's not, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it can grow like that. I am speaking from some experience. I've noticed that it grows a little, a little better if I remove the leaf. Um, so you can do it the other way. Um, if there's still moisture in the parent leaf, then sometimes that's going to cause it not to grow as fast. So if you detach it and then you're allowing it to really um, get those new roots planted in its new environment is, um, is your best bet for it to grow. Yeah, definitely. Um, somebody else is asking, what is the best soil to purchase? So the best soil is cactus soil. Um, there's many different brands. So it really just depends on what you find works best for you. Um, there's everything from black, um, black golds, there's miracle Grow. Um, tons of different brands. I could go on forever, but the main thing is it has to be fast draining. And um, a lot of times um, in, you want to make sure that it's cactus soil. Sometimes on the cactus soil, it'll also say great for succulents, um, but making sure it's fast draining and just dry soil for uh, cacti. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. If you have any more questions, someone said, I'm interested in making a succulent tree. It takes many plants. <laughs> yes, Carol, yeah. start propagating now. She, start she propagating has now and be like now mm. and you know make sure that you are on top of it every day because you're going to need quite a few. Yeah, we use about 20 plants for that project, so it's it's pretty awesome. Um, what is a succulent tree? Good question, um, Brooke. Do you you know what guys? If you're on Facebook or if you're not on Facebook, if you're on um, Instagram, or I wish I could share a picture with you. I don't have one available right now, but our, our succulent tree is basically a cone-shaped moss. Um, it's like a sphagnum moss in a cone shape. And then we add succulents to it. It lasts about a month. It really is just a really beautiful novelty piece for the holidays. And then we show you how to replant them and propagate new roots and leaves from it. So it really is just a holiday decor that we love and it's a really popular one this year. Um, yeah, so- Yeah, definitely check out our Facebook page or our Instagram. We have several of them posted. Yeah. So guys, if you have any more questions, please ask. I'm gonna type in right now what the plants are that you had in front of you tonight. Um, giving both the Latin and the common name. And if you have any questions, um, please reach out. We have a plant help desk. It's plant help desk at terrarium therapy workshops. I'm gonna type that in to our chat box as well. And also yep, I know- It's you on your have, care card too. Yeah, Melissa, I got the plant list coming. And I also know that you guys have had some great questions about, um, you guys just had great questions tonight. So if we didn't cover anything and you have more questions, please use the plant help desk email and hashtag terrarium therapy, as well as your um, University of Delaware hashtag that you're using tonight. I'm looking at the Instagram right now and you guys are tagging us in awesome pictures. So keep it coming. I know, and please tag us because we can't see all of you, unfortunately. So I'd love yeah. to see your projects and how they turned out. Yeah, yeah. And I also put in, to the chat what plants you have again, Melissa. So 
Yeah, um, and if you have any questions about any other plants, we have a really great team, very knowledgeable team on several, several, uh, all plants actually. So if we don't know, if I don't know the answer, if Kim doesn't know the answer, we'll find it for you. So email our plant help desk. Um, any plants, even if you didn't receive them from us, we're more than happy to help you with them. Um, we love plants and we want to see more people get in, um, fall in love with plants. So of course, join us for more workshops, but also just you know anything we can help you with. If you are transplanting any of these plants in the future, um, whatever we can do to help you out. Um, as you're, you're taking care of this planter, um, if you notice something doesn't look quite right, feel free to just shoot us a picture and an email and we can help you out. Yeah, guys, I hope that everybody had a very fun and relaxing night. Our main goal at Terrarium Therapy is to connect with people through plants. So we love what we do and we love being with you tonight. If you have any more questions, definitely send us a message. Um, I did put the plants in there, Melissa. Let me make sure that I, oh, sorry, I sent it to the, all the panelists. I had it on that little private message going. So let me send it to While you're Kate. doing that, Kim, um, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to you both, to Kim and Brooke for being such great succulent experts. <laughs> so much tonight, this is amazing. Your Brooke, your finished product looks great. Um, it is pretty cool, isn't it? I'm yeah. so excited to use this now. I don't even have to put many decorations up because I can just turn every, all my plants into little holiday pieces. Exactly. So, and, and we're excited to see how everybody's projects turned out and where you put them in your house. If you use it as a centerpiece, if you use it on a fireplace mantle, you know, we want to see your pictures. And so um, I put it in the chat as well. But um, post those pictures, tag UD alumni, tag terrarium therapy. Um, tonight we're using the hashtag, well, we almost always use the hashtag uh, blue hens forever. That way you'll be able to see um, other people's projects as well. Um, again, Kim and Brooke, thank you so, so much. Um, I know it sounds like everybody had a great time. Yeah. Um, some follow-up questions I'm, I'm imagining, so. Yeah, I know. it was a great night. Thank you guys for having us. Go Blue Hens and everybody take care. Good night. Yeah, thanks everybody. Bye. Have a great evening. Bye. See you guys. Enjoy your dinners. <laughs>